Hello everyone, my name is Devinder Kaur and you all are welcome to my YouTube channel The Enlightened Room. Today in this video we are starting our new topic which is organic chemistry. So let's get started. Dear students, the definition and meaning of organic chemistry has not been same from the previous years or previous centuries. So, in the 18th century, it was considered that organic chemistry is all related to the living beings. That means the products which are directly or indirectly made by living organisms are considered as the organic compounds. For example, urea, okay, or you can say fats, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals, potassium. Uh, all these kind of things were considered in organic compounds and the study of these uh, compounds was considered as organic chemistry. Similarly, things which were not made directly or indirectly from living organisms were considered as inorganic compounds. For example, alum or you can say zinc chloride, sodium chloride, uh, copper sulfate, these were considered as inorganic compounds and the study of these compounds was known as inorganic chemistry. But in the early 19th century, there came a theory uh, which is known as vital force theory. This theory was given by Basilius, which was a chemist. He was a renowned chemist and he gave this theory in 1815. Well, according to his theory, he stated that the uh, organic compounds are made from a energy which is a supreme energy and this energy is only found in living organisms and there is no trace where this energy come from how this energy is made or whatever the source of that energy is but according to him the all the organic compounds are made from this superior or supreme energy which is present in all living organisms so this is what vital force theory was one more thing about this theory is that Basilius also stated uh, that the organisms have some mysterious force due to which they create this amount of energy and this mysterious force cannot be prepared in the laboratory so organic compounds cannot be prepared artificially or in the laboratory or while doing a research but in 1828 a chemist, another chemist showed up whose name was Friedrich Wohler and he made this synthesis known as Wohler's synthesis. Well, he was doing some research but he accidentally prepared an organic compound in his laboratory. What he did was he took ammonium chloride and potassium cyanate and mixed all these two reactants and after mixing them he started heating them during the heating process the double decomposition reaction showed up and these two things these two things shifted their places moved the, uh, from each other's place okay this one shifted here and this one shifted here and as a result Ammonium cyanate was formed and potassium chloride was formed. After that, he took this ammonium cyanate here and then he started heating it alone. While heating, he knew that ammonium cyanate is a inorganic compound. Okay, But while heating, this inorganic compound got converted into an organic compound and formed urea. So, this Wohler's synthesis actually completely killed the vital force theory and the previous assumptions about the organic compounds and the organic chemistry. So there is a new theory about organic chemistry which is known as modern theory or modern research over organic chemistry. According to this theory, organic compounds are made of carbon in which they usually Re, uh, in which the carbon usually react with other atoms, for example, sulfur, chlorine, bromine, iodine, hydrogen, and many more. And after reacting with them, after making a covalent bond with them, it forms 
a compound which is known as carbon compound but there is an exception most of the oxides of carbon for example carbon monoxide carbon dioxide it's bicarbonate products dicarbonate uh, products bicarbonate products and cyanide products are not considered in the organic chemistry so we study these compounds in the inorganic chemistry okay there is a basic exception which you will study in higher classes so today we uh, we study most of the hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are what compounds formed by the bonding of carbon and hydrogen okay whether it is methane propane butane okay or whether it is ethene ethyne butene butyne propene propyne whatever it is all the hydrocarbons most of the hydrocarbons are considered organic compounds and the study of them is known as organic chemistry not only the hydrocarbons there are some other products of carbon too which uh, due to which it forms the uh, carbon compounds okay so this is what modern organic chemistry says and what does modern inorganic chemistry says whatever the rest the rest of the compounds it does not relate with the living organisms or non living organisms or any kind of mysterious force or supreme energy no they go to the practicals they research it they prepare it in the laboratory they prepare all the organic compounds and inor inorganic compounds in the lab or artificially so this is what modern inorganic and organic chemistry and today our focus is on organic chemistry and we will uh, basically study the carbon compounds in it okay organic carbon compounds so now let's start with the saturated compounds in organic chemistry we will observe two types of compounds in which they are saturated ones saturated compounds and the other one are unsaturated okay first of all what are saturated compounds dear students the compounds in which only one single bond is present in carbon carbon atoms whether there are two carbons whether there are three carbons whether there are four carbons whether they are there are 100 carbons only single bond will be present between them so that's why those carbon compounds would be considered as saturated carbon compounds okay for example ethene now if you pay attention there is only one single bond between the carbon carbon atom and the other three uh, electrons has been maintained by making bond with the hydrogen atoms so what uh, this is the complete structural formula of ethene there is a, also another structural formula which is known as condensed structural formula how do we show the condensed structural formula this is how you will Uh, show the condensed structure formula. You can simply it is, write it as CH three single bond between carbon and CH three or like this. Okay. Another form is CH three CH three. So this is what condensed structural formula, and this is what complete structural formula. Now there is another structure formula which is no, which is known as electron dot structure. in a electron dot structure in this the atoms of carbon will be shown by cross here okay so i have since they have made a single bond one electron will be shared from this carbon and other electron will be shared from this carbon okay and there is one electron here 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 similarly here since these two have made sorry bond with each other so they have mutually shared a single pair of electrons okay now another single pair of electrons will be shared with hydrogen atom is it clear to you this dot shows the electron of hydrogen which is shared with the this electron of carbon the reason i used cross and dot so that it will be clear to you which electron is from carbon and which electron is from hydrogen so this is what 
This is electron dot structure. So what is the molecular formula? We have until now discussed about molecular formula of many compounds. So what is the molecular formula of that compound? How many carbon present, uh, carbon atoms are present here? Two. And how many hydrogen are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is it clear to you? This is complete structural formula. This is condensed structural formula. This is electron dot structure and this single one is molecular formula of ethane. You can explain one substance or one compound in so many ways. Okay. Now another way to show it is by propane. So I am taking directly a molecular formula which is C3H8. Now I will show the complete structure formula. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And what will be the condensed structure formula? CH3, CH2, CH3. You can either show the single bond between them or you can ignore that bonding. Okay. And what will be the uh, electron dot structure? Sorry, electron dot structure. C, 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 and there goes this one, there goes this one, there goes this one. And this is how we will show that electron structure of propane. I hope it is clear to you. If the marker is not visible, I am extremely sorry about that. Please pardon me for this. But I hope it will be clear to you. Okay. So these are the saturated carbon compounds in which only one single bond is present in every carbon atom. Okay. So now let's talk about the unsaturated ones. So in unsaturated ones, what's the difference between the saturated carbon atoms and unsaturated carbon atoms is the only in the number of bonding. That means in unsaturated carbon atoms, what you will observe that there will be more than one double or triple bonding in the carbon carbon okay for example now i am not going to show all the uh, molecular formula or electron or structure i hope it is clear to you for example in this case here three hydrogen will be present two hydrogens are present and it has already shared two bonds with it okay or you can simply say this one in this two bonds are present in carbon carbon atom in this among three carbon atoms between two carbon atoms there is double bonding okay there could be some cases in which you will observe this that's why i said more than one time there will be double or triple bonding there could be triple bonding there could be triple bonding here if there would be here then there would be no double bonding of course but if we keep on moving forward there could be at some place uh, triple bonding could be present okay so this is what does they mean about the unsaturated carbon compounds so how do we write their formula this is how their complete electronic structure is and what is their molecular formula it is C2H4 okay similarly there is a case of ethane similarly there is a case of ethane this is its complete structure formula and what will be its molecular formula C2H2 so it is directly clear that there will be triple bonding between the carbon carbon atoms okay so this is what are saturated and unsaturated carbon compounds okay i hope it is clear to you in the upcoming videos we will be discussing more about it like the uh, straight chain structure branch structure and we will go through deeply 
from uh, about these two topics okay so if you found my video useful do share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching